Hello everyone! Classin has finally updated their screen share feature. Before this update, if you've ever used screen share before, you know that you had to make a choice when sharing your screen. Either you wanted to be able to write on the screen or have your student write on the screen that you're sharing, or you wanted the student to be able to hear any audio, like a video or audio recording that you were sharing on your screen. There was no way to do both. But now, finally, after this new update, those two things have been combined. So let's take a look at it. The same location as before, you're gonna to go to your toolbox and you're gonna choose desktop sharing if you don't see it on these top eight. Remember to click that arrow to scroll down to find it. So I have desktop sharing, and now you'll see there's just two choices at the top, teacher desktop sharing or student desktop sharing. And then it's split into two parts. The top part is just your whole desktop. So if I click on desktop, it's gonna share everything on my desktop, everything that's open. Or a custom area, which is that green box where you can choose to move it around and choose what part of your desktop you want to share. For some reason, desktop sharing does not work for me. My student can't see anything. I'm wondering if it's because I have a widescreen desktop that there's some kind of issue with sharing that, but you can try that with your students if you wanna share the entire desktop. But I prefer the bottom part anyway. This bottom section is sharing a window that you have opened on your desktop. So instead of sharing the entire desktop, I can choose to open just this window to share this window, which is bamboozle. I have OBS open for my recording. I have my files open that I was using earlier and I have a Genially tab open. So this way I can choose exactly what I want to share. I just want to share this window. So when I click on this, actually I'm not gonna click on this yet. Look at the bottom is where it says share audio. When you share the screen, others will hear the sounds on your screen. So make sure that is turned on. Okay, now I'm gonna click on this button. So I wanna share this tab that's on my desktop and click share. So now the student is seeing this. I am seeing it on my desktop and the student is sharing it, seeing it in the classroom. Keep in mind, even though for me, I can move this video box, I can't see it because I have it off my screen, but this video box is movable for the teacher. I can also make it to where I just see myself or see none of us, but for the student, their video boxes and your video box look the same as in the classroom. It's stuck up at the top, in the middle, just like a regular classroom. They are not able to move it. You're also not able to make your video boxes bigger. You're stuck in the small little box. That's the negative of screen share. So I'm gonna move that out of the way for now. So now you can see I'm sharing the screen and any sounds that the game has are also going to be shared with the student. So they can hear the sounds, you can hear the sounds. But you'll also notice, I'll move this up so you can see it, underneath what I'm sharing, I can see the tools. So these are the teacher's tools that I can control the microphone, I can add, change my camera so my settings are there, I can change um, what I'm sharing if I want to share a different window and I can also click the up button to turn off sharing the audio. Note, this was a little confusing for some people the first time they did the screen share. Note would be the writing tools, the annotation tools. So here are my annotation tools. So this is for me to write on the screen. And of course the student will see my writing. But if you want the student to be able to write, you need to click on the up arrow and you have to click authorize students to draw. Once you do that, now the student has the ability to draw, but of course you still need to make sure you turn on the crown so they can see their tools. Now my student, this is my student writing, is able to write on the screen. So they have the same, and again, 
it looks exactly the same as it does as if they were in the classroom. So even though our tools at the bottom look different, it looks exactly the same for the student. There is no difference. If I want to turn off, even though I have the crown on, I can forbid the student control. That means they now see all their tools at the bottom, but they can't use them. You will also notice authorized students to click. If you've ever looked at the screen share before this option was there, you might think, oh, my student can now click on the screen, use the mouse. Not necessarily. This option only works for students who are using a desktop or laptop computer. All of my students use an iPad. So this does not work if the student is using an iPad. They can try all they want, they can click, 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 but it's not going to do anything. So I don't even bother with this button. Either draw or don't draw. If you're lucky enough to have a student who has a desktop computer or a laptop, you can test it out, turn that on, and then they can click and drag whatever the same way that you would if you were interacting with that website. They would be able to click on the football. They would be able to click on check if they have a computer. But students on an iPad, all they can do is draw and then you can click for them. You have the hands up on and off button still. You have the student list if you need to access that. You have the chat if you need to access that. Um, you have the record lesson button and you have your classroom settings. So you basically have access to all the things you would in your classroom while you are screen sharing. So I'm very happy because I know there are so many teachers that have been waiting and asking for the ability to have audio and annotation in screen share. So you might be asking, why would I want to use screen share when, I'll go back to my classroom, when I have the browser that I can use that already has audio and annotation. Well, there are some teachers who use CPTs, which are curriculum that is put together into like a textbook, where sometimes it has video, it has audio, it has um, interactive features, it has um, where you can answer the questions, circle and write. So teachers need both audio and annotations, but these CPTs are not on the internet. They're not web-based. They're software that is on their computer. So the only way to access those CPTs would be through screen sharing. So before they had to either do one or the other. Do I want my student to write or do I want my student to be able to hear the audio? Now they're able to do both. If you use a curriculum like Genially related, like Learnaling, then I would recommend just using the browser because there's nothing that the screen share has that the browser doesn't. And I prefer the browser because I can enlarge my video, I can enlarge the student's video, I can move us around, I can change the size of the lesson, all that stuff you can't do on screen share. Also another thing to note that I found out when doing my own testing with my student over here is the quality of the screen share versus browser is exactly the same. Previously, the browser was super laggy and super choppy, meaning it wasn't a smooth, like if you're watching a video, it was very choppy images. But now they've changed that, they've done some upgrades to the browser to where now the student sees the video very smooth. And it is still a little laggy, but so is the screen share. So the quality in both of those are exactly the same. So just my recommendation, you don't have to listen to me. If you can use the browser, I recommend using the browser. If you can't use the browser and you have to screen share, then obviously use the screen share. If you have any questions, let me know. Bye everyone.